Okay, so if you're anything like me, you have been um, confronted with fear. If you're anything like me, fear has stopped you from progressing. If you're anything like me, um, fear is something that you may not even have recognized that you have. Uh, this past um, week, this past month, I would say the past couple of years, have really shown me the toll that fear takes on families, the toll that fear takes on dreams, the toll that fear takes on plans, and the toll that fear can take on your very life. In order for us to overcome fear, um, we have to be able to identify it because it is lurking everywhere. It shows up when you have anxiety. It shows up when you have a panic attack. It shows up when you don't want to send that message. It shows up when you don't want to forgive. It shows up when you're afraid to ask for the raise that you know you deserve. It shows up when you are afraid to leave that relationship. It shows up when you are afraid to admit that your kid to your kids that you made a mistake or that you don't have enough money to do what you said you promised to do. Fear shows up everywhere and it causes us to behave in such a way that is not consistent with what we really want because what we really want is to be full of love and what we really want is to be in alignment with God and everything that he wants for us. So I'm going to share with you four things, four things today um, that you need to know about fear. So when it shows up, you have the ability to eliminate it and to move forward and get where you're trying to go. The first thing is God is not the author of fear. You are. You created fear. God is not the author of fear. The Bible tells us, that God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and a sound mind. So when fear shows up, you feel powerless. When fear shows up, you feel as if you have no control. When you when fear shows up, it literally can take away your breath. It can take away your strength. And that is not the truth. God has not given you that. When fear shows up, it makes you feel a lack of love. When fear shows up, you think you are not loved. When fear shows up, sometimes you cannot love. Sometimes you get angry. You want to beat everybody down and so on and so forth. All of that is fear. And fear does not give us a sound mind. God has given us a sound mind. There are things that we have done out of fear that we know are not the right thing to do. When I was spending money crazy, living check to Monday, all of that was fear that I would not be accepted. All of that was out of fear that I would not be able to live up to the lie that I told, which let's go all the way back around. God is not the author of fear. You are. Okay. So because God is not the author of fear, the next thing you need to understand is this. The elimination of fear is within your control. Number two, the elimination of fear is within your control. You have the ability to tell fear, go the other way. You have the ability to tell fear, not today. You have the ability to tell fear, it is not going your way. Not anymore, not going forward, not now, not tomorrow. The elimination of fear is within your control. So sometimes you might be asking God, God, please take away the fear. God, please take away the fear. But you're still in the relationship. God, please take a fear. Take away the fear. God, please take away the fear. But you're still at the job. God, please take away the fear. Please take away the fear. But you're still in the situation that you were in. You have the power and the ability and 100% control over whether fear is present in you or not. The next thing you need to understand about fear being 100% in your control, fear prevents God from giving you his control. Let me repeat. Fear prevents God from giving you his control. So when fear is out of the way, then God is able to give you the power that you need to get through whatever it is. You ever heard the saying, let go, let God? You have to let go and then let God. If you hold on to it, God has no control. If you hold on to it, then he can't do what he's supposed to do. You know, my good friend told me, she said, you cannot worship God with your faith and the enemy with your fear. At the same time, you've got to pick one. You can't straddle the fence. So some of us are walking around saying we um, have faith, but we're acting fearful. We're saying that we believe and trust God, but we're doing things that are the opposite. You ever heard the saying, not only let go and let God, but Jesus take the wheel, <laughs> right? So when Jesus takes the wheel, then you now have the ability to just sit back. Whenever I say Jesus take the wheel, that means I'm done. 
I'm done. Nothing I worked, tried. So guess what? So you got to get this. You got to get this. God is not the author of fear. You are. The elimination of fear is 100% within your control. God, the, the presence of fear prevents God from giving you his control. And the last thing I want to share with you is that fear is a sign of strain. And this is how the strain shows up. The strain shows up with conflicting behavior. You know you shouldn't do this, but you do it anyway. You know you should do something, but you don't do it. And what ends up happening is you become intolerable to yourself. That's why you feel guilty. That's why you feel alone. That's why you feel a burden. Because you are doing the things to yourself that you know you shouldn't do. The next piece of the strain is when you just go along and you don't really want to do it. So then you become bitter. Then you become angry. The next step is going to change everything for you. You've got to understand what fear really is. And you've got to understand that you have the power to eliminate it. One, God is not the author of fear. You are. And since you created it, you can get rid of it. The elimination of fear is 100% in your control. Fear prevents God from giving you his control. And fear is a sign of strain. Your behavior is conflicting. You want to do one thing and you don't do it. You want to, you don't want to do one thing and you do that anyway. And then the other thing is just going along. You know, you're in a bad relationship. You're just going along. You're at uh, in a job or you're at some place or in something that does not line up with your integrity, but you're just going along. And so that prevents strain. And eventually you're going to pop. Anybody got a bad temper? <laughs> That's me, right? I'm talking to myself, right? You got a bad temper because you've been trying to overlook it. You've been trying not to say anything. You've been trying. And all of that is fear. So this is what we're going to do. This is what we're going to do. This is what I'm doing. You know, I talk about starting a business. I talk about getting your money straight. I talk about um, having a life full of harmony and joy and, you know, raising your kids and having a good relationship. I talk about all those things, but I haven't really told you how I got there. Let me tell you how I got there. These are the things that are going to change everything for you. The first thing that I have acknowledged, and I remember back in my 20s, I was at a job that I did not like, and I just asked God to lead me to a career where I could help people. That was the number one thing that I wanted. So the first thing is that you are going to repeat this affirmation. I am here only to be truly helpful. Say it. I am here only to be truly helpful. If you figure out how to be helpful, you won't have to worry about your business. If you figure out how to be helpful, you eventually will not have to worry about money. If you figure out how to be helpful, you will not have to worry about how to be happy. Because helping, if you figure out a way to help, now you may be able to monetize that help, you may be able to systemize that help, you may be able to franchise that help, you know, one of the, the best things, you know, the, the most interesting things, one of the things I'm really curious about is the slutty vegan, the, the business, the slutty vegan. This woman, our sister, figured out a way to make being a vegan uh, fun and to eat what we want to eat the way we want to eat it and to enjoy it. That is being helpful. The next thing is I am here to represent him who sent me. Say it. I am here to represent him who sent me. When I was at rock bottom, I just asked God to save me from myself. And when people see me, they will see you. The last thing I'm going to say is this. I do not have to worry about what to say or do because he who sent me will direct me. Now, repeat that and go get help. Asklin.org. Meet Lynn Richardson, entertainment executive, TV personality, and financial coach. You might have seen Lynn on the Steve Harvey Show or Good Morning America giving financial advice. Please say hello to financial expert, my girl, my buddy, Lynn Richardson. Hey, everybody. The number one thing that I have to say to people is more money doesn't solve a money problem. If it did, millionaires wouldn't go bankrupt. She uses her quick wit and humorous presentation style to help others face their issues and achieve their personal and professional goals, as well as spiritual harmony. You go to a rack, $500 purse. Self, do you usually have $500? Uh -uh. <laughs> $20 purse. Self, that's usually how much you got. That's the purse that you get off the rollback rack. Over the last 25 years, Lynn used her financial expertise to create a curriculum of books and online classes to help clients achieve financial freedom. Lynn teaches clients how to get out of credit card debt, 
shows them how to create a home-based business and to create multiple streams of income.